Talking tunes, and we've been uh, talking about the legends today, legends of radio. I've got a legend on the phone right now that uh, actually we're FaceTiming or Face, I don't know, we're Face something. We're, <laughs> we're on the phone anyway. And uh, he's a legend in, uh, in in writing. He's been writing for how many years now? Tracy Lorenz, I should say. Oh, probably 25. 25 years. There. And now yeah. you, you write, write for how many papers? Still can't spell. Uh, <laughs> I can't uh, either, so there you go. I should have been a writer. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good thing I'm editor. You know, back in the, um, when I started, I actually hand wrote the stuff and mailed it in. And um, somebody else typed it and did all that stuff. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's come a long ways with um, spell checker and cut and paste. And certainly, certainly much easier now than it was back then. Yeah. Like, no clue. Now, now, you've been writing for, for all those years. And do you, how do you decide what to write about? The, the general process is uh, I have a, like a 5 o'clock deadline on Thursday. And about 4.30 I go, damn, i got to write a column. And then <laughs> I just sit down and <laughs> there's really, I really put no thought into it whatsoever. Just when I do it, it doesn't seem to work out. So it's better when I just sit down and open a vein and see what comes out. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was like. You know, the first time I met you was on uh, uh, when I was running the board for Jim Riley over at uh, WKBZ, and uh, he he invited you in there as a as a guest. I'm not sure what you guys were talking about because I tried not to listen too much when <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when Jim talked. But and uh, but but <laughs> but some of the stuff that you were saying it was was uh, it was making me crack up, and I couldn't help myself. I was sitting there just trying to run the board, and I was cracking up. So. But, but and I no. don't think it was supposed to be fun. <laughs> I mean, the Jim, Jim show was a pretty heavy-duty political show. I don't think that uh, humor was supposed to be injected, but... Yeah. You know, I, I can't help it. It's just how it comes out. <laughs> and I'm glad it did. It made my day, that's for sure. Yeah. I was, you know, yeah. drinking multiple cups of coffee just to keep myself awake usually for Jim's show. But, you know. <laughs> and, you know, you know, I love Jim. Jim's a good guy. He's, he's he's still a buddy. He know he knows I can pick yeah. on him. But anyway, um, like I say, we we're talking about the legends today, the legends of radio. I talked to uh, quite a few of them uh, that have been, you know, from the back of the TRU days and and whatever. Were wow. you here? Were you here back in those days, or? Oh yeah, I had the uh, transistor radio strapped to the handlebars of my Schwinn. Okay. And uh, yeah. What's I actually worked for WCMU for about a year. Oh, you really? It's on air? Yeah. Fred Tasco. Okay. You know, I, um, I, I wrote commercials. Oh, we wrote commercials. A buddy of mine right now that uh, um, started over there with, with Fred was uh, Don Anderson. Do you know him? No. Okay. Don Actually, Anderson need, used to write commercials, too, so he started off with that. But, I'll uh, say, we, when I was at WTRU, we, we had the worst softball team in the history of sports with co-ed <laughs> yeah and we would just get murdered every game and and we had um these two guys that came to every game and watched us they were fans of the station and then one of them said i realize you 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 lose on purpose just to you know it's for ratings and i said yeah that's that's what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> we had a right fielder a girl who was just blind as a bat and when the ball went out, you had to yell at her and, and sort of point to where he was going, and she'd pick it up and just throw it in it. She couldn't have thrown it over the fence. She could have thrown it. <laughs> she would just pick it up and throw it with no, no direction. You know, so, so yeah, that was uh, WTRU. It's, it kind of sounds like when I was there, but it was, wasn't TRU. It was the same building, but it was Sunny FM. And we had the, the Sunny right. Slammers, which was a basketball team, and that was pretty bad, too. So I, I, I yeah, don't think yeah. DJs are made to play sports. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm made to be athletes. Yeah. No. <laughs> so did you so, did you go on the air at all, or did you, you just you nope. wrote commercials? Just wrote wrote spots. See, the, you know that's one thing about radio. You don't you don't see that anymore. I mean, the salespeople were the ones that write their spots. Now it's not not like yeah. it used to be. Well, that's mean, how I started out, and then they, then they would just start handing me spots, and I'd write it, and next thing you know, I was a writer. Okay. Yeah, I remember one, um, I had to write for, uh, it was a, a head shop, I guess you'd call it, in the basement at the mall. Oh, cool. And it, was, it, it was a one-minute spot, and they told me I couldn't mention anything that they sold or what it was for. 
Let me. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you can't say like narcotic paraphernalia or anything like that. You know, no, it's... nothing. I could not mention anything that even hinted at what it was for, for a minute. And now look at today. The commercial is a long commercial. Yeah, now look at today. It's legal. <laughs> look at today. Head shops. You know, it's funny because there's a head shop back in Mount Clemens where I used to live, and uh, it is still there. I, I couldn't believe it. It was still there. But anyway. Wow. Um, <laughs> so as far as, now you wrote commercials for Fred over at TRU. Right. And then what, so what made you get into the papers and writing for the papers? Um, I don't know if you really want to know. There was a... Um, a writer named Bob Talbert at the Detroit Free Press. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bob Talbert. Oh, yeah. But, so every day I'd get the Free Press, and every day I'd read his column, and I'd think, I can write this crap, but I never did. So then one day, he wrote a column, said he was going on vacation. If anybody wanted to write his column, submit one, and, you know, that could be, when he's on vacation, he could write his column. Hmm. So I hand-wrote it out, I mailed it in, and uh, he picked me. So I wrote his column when he was on vacation, and then I wrote some more stuff for him. And then every time I went on vacation, I wrote it. And then he, uh, then he died. So that ended my writing career for the free press. So then I was working in uh, construction, I guess you say, I own a steel company. And um, Summer Celebration came to town, and the Chronicle put a thing in the paper that said, if you want to review what the concert, we'll give you a free ticket. And being cheap, I thought, well, I can, you know, I can write a column. Or review, so I did it. I wrote a review, first concert at REO Speedway again, and they liked it, so I wrote another one. And then the next year, I think I wrote all of them. And from then on, I just pretty much wrote all the, all the summer celebration reviews. And then they had me write some other feature columns. And next thing you know, they gave me my own column, and off it went just because I was too cheap to buy a ticket to REO Speedway. And so it was so, all a fluke. I mean, so I'm not a writer. I'd last my ticket in English class was in 10th grade, so. See, so you, you kind of started with the, with the Chronicle then, right? Sort of. Yeah, I mean, well, you the did free the free press, press before but the I mean, Chronicle. But yeah, I mean, the first the actual big paid gigs were for the Chronicle. Okay. All right. Um, so from it started out in doing the reviews, and then I ended up with my own column on the back page there, and off I went. Yeah, so and now you're was, you're still writing for the Chronicle, though. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, no, they fired me long ago. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, because I mean... Sarah mostly they moved me. Yeah. Yeah. But you... Never you, quite figured that one out. I was their biggest writer by a mile. They sold more papers in the boxes. They charged more to advertise next to my column. They, I mean, there's no question. Fan mail, I get six or 7,000 letters a year. Other people, wow. I get three total. So, and, so uh, that's yeah, why... I was the first one they fired that's why Bill Eddings loved you so well. Okay. All right. Just checking. Me and Bill. Got along. Oh, I still got bankers boxes full. Of, I remember one time I came into Gunnar Carlson, and um, he called me in for something I wrote. And I knew I was, trouble was coming. He was my editor, or the, the top editor. And I go in there, and I got this banker box full of letters. Yeah. Like 5,000 letters. And he's got these three pieces of hate mail. And I said, but... I've got 5,000 here. He goes, yeah, but these three don't like you, or these three hate you more than those 5,000 like you. I don't know what the math is on that, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> these three people hate you more than those 5,000 people like you. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, then, I, I bet you slept in that okay, though, right? But they were still, you know, if they liked me or didn't like me, they were still reading it. Right. That's all I really cared about. So I don't know why the paper had a problem. Obviously. They seemed to worry more about retaining the... 70 year old readers that they had and of getting any new ones or trying to you know yeah apparently. but you still have it's all gone now I, go ahead you know, go ahead I was just saying you no, still so then I went from there to the examiner and then the legal news and all that stuff so okay yeah, it's still, I still write a column every week I don't know if he reads it but I write it I still no, the, cash the checks the examiner is free too you can pick that paper up for free right um, not anymore. Now it's subscription only. Oh, is it? It's gone. Okay. Yeah, when it was... So now, yeah, it's, it's subscription. It goes... It's owned by the Legal News. Grand Rapids Legal News, Detroit Legal News. So... Okay. It mostly goes to legal offices. But it is still the Norton Examiner slash Muskegon Legal News. 
Okay, so because I got to start, I got to start picking it up again, reading your column. I really did enjoy your yeah. column when you when I was reading it uh, before. You were like a paper. Was it was it still the Examiner when, over in Grand Haven when you were writing over there? What what paper you were writing? Oh, I wrote on? for the Grand Haven Tribune too, but yeah, it was yeah. still the Examiner. Okay, all right. Yeah, I thought I've been I fired was... by some of the best papers in West Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> So, so if anybody wants to see your column, they can. They still have it in the Grand Haven, Grand Haven Tr Tribune, then or no? Oh no, they fired me too. Um, <laughs> you can see it on. <laughs> you know why they fired me? No. This is a. Um, at the end of every column, I ended with three dots, like dot dot dot, and then some little pun that sort of ties it all together. Yeah. And they said you can't use the three dots; it's got to be a comma. And I said, look, a comma doesn't work. The three dots work, you know. Yeah. And it's you know, I've been doing it for 25 years the exact same way, and people kind of look for that. And they said, "No, nope, it's got to be a comma, so we don't need you anymore." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that was it. I said, "It's not AP style." I've been fired. I've been style. fired for some strange things, but I don't think I've ever been <laughs> fired for something like that. It's kind of a strange way to get fired because of dots. I don't know. Is that yeah. because of the, the paper? Can. Printing well, it or they, what? I, they, I don't get it. No, they just said that it was not proper. Um, you know, it should have been a comma, not three dots. Oh, okay. That's why it's called AP style. When they AP style of editing, they edit, you know, AP Associated Press puts up the parameters of punctuation. I guess that one was wrong, so whatever. <laughs> Off I went. <laughs> of course, you also. But it also was never. It was, it was always a hobby, you know. It was. I, I never did. Yeah. It. To make, I mean, I, I made a lot of money doing it, but that was never the reason. So if somebody fired me, I, you know, I had another job. Yeah. Well, cause, like you in say, fact, you, one time um, th th there's writers at the Chronicle that really, that's when they, a lot of them didn't like me, but one, some of them really didn't like me because one time I wrote that, you know, something effective. I didn't care if they fired me because I have a real job. <laughs> and they kind of focused on that real job part, and that's not what I meant. You know, I didn't mean that yeah. writing wasn't a real job. But well, it's, it's kind of like radio. You do it for fun. It's not really a real job. <laughs> right. So. But, Just for the chicks. Yeah. But like I say, you do own a construction company, right? Which, of course, is not yeah. doing so well right now because of the, the virus. But. Yeah, it kind of, took, kind of took a hit. We were doing well till two weeks ago. Yeah. You know, and even then, we we're still hacking away because we've got some companies that we do work for that are considered critical or whatever. But, yeah, now... It's, they just basically shut us down until it's all over. We can't go into houses. We can't do roofs or siding or windows or bathrooms or anything. So right. we're pretty much stuck. So that, that's what I was going to ask you since you are in the business with this. Now, what about, like, what if somebody's house uh, roof starts leaking? Do they just have to grin and bear it or what? They can't get it done? No, I think there we might be able to do it to fix a roof leak or something that was you know window blew out or fire or something but um yeah when you when you go to pick up a permit it better be for something that is critical okay right. if it's just for a, for a deck or something they won't uh you know, yeah right a lot because i was i was just curious about that i saw i was just wondering because you know so anybody like, needs a new roof out there just go punch a hole in it <laughs> and we'll, we'll fix it we'll there you, you go <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got buckets it's coming. Buck hole of you got buckets yeah. of rain coming in. You're, 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 you're good. You can call Tracy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> call me. I'll take care of it. Now, I got to I, I gotta ask you this because we talked about this uh, before. Uh, you said you had a, you were uh, did a couple of acting gigs, and one of, one of yours is on Netflix. Oh, yeah. well, I tried to look for it, and I was Offspring, you said? Offspring. Okay. Yeah. I look yeah, for Offspring. Offspring. It's a horror. It's a horror movie they shot here in Muskegon. It was actually a pretty big budget movie. It was uh, one of the top five best times I've ever had. Because when you're in a movie like that, you still get. I played Copman before, and we were known as meat props. Um, <laughs> if you're like a lamp, you're just a regular prop. But if you're a dog or a person, then you're a meat prop. So they would say like, "Send in the meat props," and we would <laughs> go. So all the real actors were out there acting away, and the directors and camera people and I mean there was a hundred people out there but the meat props we hung back in the craft services tent and we were just mowing down food <laughs> they, it, every every day it was full of uh, 
food and drinks, and it was pretty cool. So we would just hang out there and they'd say, you know, meat props, oh, and off we'd go. It, so it, I played cop number four. Yeah. Um, it was a horror movie about cannibals. Um, <laughs> most of the scenes I was in, they shot out at Lake Harbor State Park. They blocked the whole park out. And, um, you know, they had all the cameras and lights and all up in the trees. So it was, uh, it was a pretty cool experience. It was... So, um, have you watched it lately on Netflix? Oh, because I searched for it on Netflix, I couldn't find it. No, I haven't. I haven't seen it probably in a year. It's not like you know. I sit in a dark room and watch my old movies. <laughs> my fifteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing is that I knew. I, I kind of studied where the camera angles were and where the shots. You know, I, I checked the shot seats. Yeah. So there were four cops. We were always together, and we always sort of walked together. And I would make sure to get the angle, so I was the first one up the hill. And I would stand behind the actor that they were, you know, acting, and so I'd always be in the background. So I was in a lot of shots um, that I shouldn't have been in. I just sort of scoot over and sit in the background. So but then I mysteriously disappeared. That's cop number four, and like halfway through the movie, there's only three cops. So I was. Uh, <laughs> so then you got moved up to number three, or what? <laughs> <laughs> nope, I was. I was just gone. I was gone. You were I gone. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to die on camera. I was just. Okay, well, there's four cops for half a movie, and then there was only three cops. Okay, so, so you just died, but they never told. Given. They never said how. Well, I think there was only supposed to be three, but they wanted to use one of my cars in the movie, and I was like, "Well, you know, as long as you're using one of my cars, why don't you give me a part?" Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So even though I was cop number four, I had no gun, I had no hat, I had, I had a cop <laughs> uniform, but I didn't have all the other accoutrements, so. So I was basically bait. I was out there running around the woods with a flashlight. I must have guns, and I'm just, you know, trying to track. But so what? So what car you know, made it Porsche. into the movie? Um, Porsche 928 SE4. Oh, there you go. The car's in the movie more than I am. Well, that's what I'm saying. Did you did you get special uh, money for the car, or just for your your short part? I got like 600 bucks, I think, for the car, and. Um, it was pretty crazy because they took all the windows out. They put in fake windows, yeah, and then made out of candy, like clear hard candy. Oh, so they break. And then they smashed them all. Yeah, so oh. they smashed all. Of them. So I've got car pictures. In fact, um, at one point they were driving it and doing all this stuff, and the car is the windows are broken out. It's covered in blood, fake blood, and they needed gas. So they drove it to a gas station up in Lexington, and the guy said he's covered in blood. The car's covered in blood. He gets the gas, he goes in, pays, comes out, no one said a word. <laughs> <laughs> Just another mass murder in Lexington. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I I somebody might have said, like, hey, uh, wait, okay? how many years ago was this? Uh, probably 10. Yeah, oh, okay. It was a big deal. Yeah, it, was, I, it took like a month to shoot it. I didn't re- I don't remember. It was remember back it. When, when they had the deal that uh, the state was paying to make movies in Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. that part. Yeah, and then it went away probably because of this movie. They yeah, never it was They never it was called me. Time. It was in the I, it was in the that's right. I guess they didn't have a car for him. That's right. You gotta you gotta have the car. <laughs> um but it was uh it was a very cool experience. To be in a movie. Yeah, I I, cool. I don't actual I, on T V in the in the movie theaters. I mean they had the big grand openings and all that stuff. And yeah. It was pretty wild. The, I, I tried to find it on Netflix and I couldn't find it, so I'm I'm, I'm going to have to search like the. Uh, I will forward you a link or something. Yeah, I'll have to find. Yeah, maybe it's on Netflix. Maybe it's on Hulu or one of those. But I have, uh, you know, I just go on my Roku box and you can type in. Offspring. Yeah, I got the Roku too. I looked at I looked on Hulu and I found Offspring, but it was a like a series. No. So so I knew that wasn't it, new. but yeah, but it's called the same thing. So but I couldn't find anything else that said Offspring besides that. So. I'll, I'll search for it though, because I got to see number four cop and uh, and your car. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, you, did, you didn't get any lines, kidding. did you? Did you get your grunt or uh, anything? No, I almost had. I almost had one where I said, "We need another gurney over here." But then it went to Tom's ass. <laughs> have Tom's you have, ass. have you ever tried yeah, to write yeah. a script for a movie at all? Um, no. I mean, you got to listen. writing a play though, because my kids, my kids been in plays. Yeah. He's in eighth grade now, and he's in the Catholic Central play this year. And it seems like plays wouldn't be that tough. 
to write a musical. So there you go. My 21 days I'll have off. Right. Um, I might give them an attempt. You got all this time on your hands, man. You're just sitting at home now. Start sitting writing. Home. Your, writing your Let's masterpiece. Play. You did write a book, though, didn't you? Um, two books. Two books, okay. Out there. Two books. Well, one was from the Chronicle, and one was from the Examiner Times. So. Yeah, they put them out, but they're out there. They're on um, Amazon, I believe. I think yeah. the first one, the Chronicle one, might be out of print, but the second one's still available. What's it? What's the name? So, yeah. What's uh, Tracy Lorenz, The Columns, Volume 1. Oh, okay. Okay. The original. The first one was, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it had a weird <laughs> title. You still Flip Flops, <laughs> Buffets, and Haunted Pennies. Yeah, I've written two. I can't remember the name of one. Okay. Well, you know. Oh, the arteries. I can hear them hardening. <laughs> hardening. Yeah. So there was uh, a couple books. Yeah. The first book signing I did um, at Barnes & Noble. I called my friends because I didn't want to like an idiot and sitting there with nobody buying my books. I said, you got to show up and at least look like someone's there, you know? <laughs> so so I, sh I showed up, and um, they were lined up around the building and out in the parking lot. Really? Which I wasn't expecting. I didn't even have a pen with me. <laughs> I had to borrow a pen because I honestly didn't think I was going to show up. Yeah, I think I signed 2,200 books that day. Wow, wow. Because the... Uh, was a surprise. I, re I remember going to a book signing over there at the book nook with an with a, one of the astronauts that went to the went to the moon, and he didn't have that many people there. To get no. to uh, hey, like twelve people have gone to the moon. How many <laughs> people have been in cop number four? Yeah, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah, there's only, there's only one Tracy. <laughs> there's well, because honest to God, when I write stuff, I honestly never think that anybody's going to read it. Yeah. And if I did it, I'd probably write differently, but it never really occurs to me. Because I would think, okay, here's the thing that is completely non-controversial. There's nobody, if anybody does read this, nothing's going to happen. And the next day, you know, everything's blowing up. Like, huh? My logic was so pure. How can anybody argue with this? I mean, you know, they would. But it worked out. Yeah. Again, I had another job. <laughs> I had a backup plan. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, like I say, you, you, you're always spontaneous, too. That's, what I, that's when I noticed that uh, on Riley's show, you actually made it fun because you just, <laughs> you just came up with some stuff that it's like, it's where did that come from? So, yeah. I don't know. It's one of those things. Now, do you, do you keep, your, keep your employees entertained on the construction sites or what? Um, no. <laughs> I think they look at me in an opposite way. Yeah. <laughs> I do when I make suggestions. They look at me like, uh, why don't you go back in the office? Yeah. So, but, yeah, it's, there's not a lot of mirth. Not a lot of mirth out there on the construction site. Yeah. I do okay with some of the customers, you know, but yeah. um, it's hard when you're uh, sort of the boss to, you've got to sometimes be the boss. Yeah. You can't always be friends. So, right, right. Yeah. Whatever. But I, I would think I'm way too easy than I should be. Way. You, yeah, you, uh, you got to find out the name of your book so I can I can read them too. I'm I'm curious not to read your books. I mean, you know, I don't read that often. But since I have all this time in my hands, I'm <laughs> looking. Through, I'm reading right now. Right now, I'm reading the read, book on Lucy Lucy Arnaz. So I don't there you read go. anything. I would say the last two books I read, I wrote. I don't read anything. <laughs> I haven't read a book like a yeah you know, probably ten fifteen years since I've read an actual. Well, now, now you got to write a, a screenplay. So there you go. Screenplay, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. You can make the uh, next movie in Muskegon. There's big gaps in there. You know, you can just write like dance scene, and then there'll be like a big you know gap. So it's not like you have to write. You can write a book. There's a lot of words. You write a play. You think would be you know some more dead spots. Yeah, I would hope somewhere there must be a template on how to write one and I just gotta sort of fill it in. <laughs> yeah, I've got some ideas. I'm sure you could you could probably uh, once once the playhouse at White Lake uh, reopens, I'm sure they might uh, consider, you know, putting your play there. So there you go. Yeah, we can be like like darling the gang and hey, put on the play. <laughs> Hang up some blankets. <laughs> All you people under ninety or too young remember that reference. But yeah, yeah. Do you do you uh, have you ever done any acting just out of curiosity? 
other than cop number four? No. Well, I mean, besides the, the no. cop number four, yeah. Oh, uh, no, it's still a no. <laughs> I've never had an actual one. I was going to say I was in The King and I, um, where I played a guard instead of a cop, so I'm, I'm kind of getting typecast. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you must have that look about 5, you. And at 5'10", 140, you know, I've got that menacing look. Yeah. Well, it was, it was stupid. There were supposed to be guard and the king and the king and I, and the other three guards are guard size. And then there's, you know, I'm like, this little shrimp stand there, and they must like, oh, he must know some uh, classic, basic beginner karate or something, because he's not guarding that thing. But yeah, that was the worst. Because they, they get, everybody else had these really fancy costumes, because, you know, it's a period piece, and they've got these blowing gowns and all this fancy Arabian stuff. Then they hand me this pair of like MC Hammer pants and I'm like, <laughs> where's the rest of it? Yeah, you know, that's it. So uh, was your line can't touch this? Or? <laughs> <laughs> and then I put them on backwards and she's like, oh, those are backwards. I'm like, oh, pretty complicated pants you got here. But yeah, that's all I, that was my entire costume was like these MC Hammer pants clam digger <laughs> things and I'm out there with my sparrow chest and you know standing there <laughs> yeah so i actually in that one i played a, a guard a priest and uh a tree so was, a guard a priest and a tree part. okay yeah yeah quite the um, career <laughs> but, but it was it was you know you, you learn a lot of stuff and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of yeah bonding and everybody gets along oh, yeah. and, and you know go home so, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, have you done any acting you've been, you've been in plays What's that? You personally, have you put? Have you started any plays? That no, no. I like I was going to say. I I've done a lot of uh, background stuff as far as running sound and that kind of yeah. thing for, like yeah. the the playhouse and uh, for Judy Johnson back in the day over at the Frontal and stuff. But in yeah. civic theater, but yeah, that's if, about it. Yeah. You, it. It doesn't matter if you're the star or you're you know the guard way down where I was. Yeah. Um. You all get along, and so it's like one big. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Before. You know. It's it like I say. It's, it's a lot months. of. A lot of work too, because you're you're there for every performance. You know, whether you're doing the background stuff, the lighting, or whatever, you're still there for every performance to make sure you and get it right. And so. if you're me, and I'm only there, you know, I'm on stage for you know a minute. Yeah. You still got to be there for every practice, all the way through every right. rehearsal. So, yeah. So, like I said, my son Q's uh, doing it now, and he was in the senior play in seventh grade, and again in eighth grade. When I was in seventh eighth grade, I wouldn't even dream of being seen to play. I mean, those are like men and women up there. There's a little seventh grade. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, I didn't do that stuff either. To like it and yeah, he used yeah. to like it a lot, and uh, now he appreciates just how much there is to go into it. So. Yeah, yeah. Whatever he's doing. Well, it's amazing right now. This is one thing you, you've got to reflect on, too, is that you all this stuff you took for granted, you know, so. Oh, yeah. But Yep, and then it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you spending some time with us and uh, talking a little bit here. I you know I've been talking about the uh, the legends and you're kind of a legend in Muskegon and uh, as as the, the the king writer of uh, of Muskegon County. What do you think? Does that fit you or no? Yeah. <laughs> Did um, you ever get any awards that said anything for? Any? I was nominated a bunch of times, but I never won anything. I got nominated for uh, actually national humor columnist of the year like five times. Yeah. I always lost. I always lost. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start looking for your count. It's an honor to be nominated. Yeah, it's an honor to be nominated. Of course, I've never been nominated for anything. Well, so. a, and it's an honor to, to talk to the legend uh, Oscar Osbo. Oh, yeah. Everybody but, knows you. Yeah, right. Well, you yeah. are top of the food chain when it comes to radio. I'm always first in line in the food chain. I know that, but... <laughs> <laughs> See, you get in the movies, you get the craft service table. Ooh, is that lasagna again? Oh. Wait a minute. It's like someone giving you uh, free access to the to the mini bar in your hotel room. You just can't believe it's happening. Yeah. You know. There you are. They're working down a handful of real M and M's before they call you out. Yeah, what the green ones? They were so outrageous on this on this movie site that they had girls that did nothing but spray us with um, bug spray. You go like bug spray. And she went over and sprayed it down and went back <laughs> off screen. And, but, yeah. So did you get that honor too, though? Bugs. or You got that honor? What? The, the, the same bug, bug spray? spray? Yeah. Oh, I took a, I took advantage of that, yeah. <laughs> uh, I could use a mister. She'd come over and mist you down. Oh, yeah. That's pretty wild. <laughs> bug spray. 
Uh, the meat props are a little, little itchy over here. Can we get some meat? <laughs> I can use some meat. I can use some meat. I can shoot too much straight off. So yeah. these, I mean, they were the people working on the movie were trying to work their way up through the. Uh, in fact, at, at the water, you know where the watermark condominiums are? Yeah. The Shaw Walker. Oh yeah, building. yeah. In the Shaw Walker building, they built a cave in there for this movie, and the cave is still in that building. Huh. It took them. It took them probably two months to build this cave. It was pretty wild, but yeah, it's all in there. And they trucked in a bunch of sand to put in the bottom of the cave, and these people are in there working like maniacs for this huh. cave. And yeah. Still part of Muskegon history. That cave is still in that in that building. You could become a tour the guide, cave. you know. Maybe when the I set, could, I could yeah. do them too. You could do the tour. Right here for my career guide. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tracy, <laughs> and I played the fourth cop. <laughs> see this chalk outline? That's for my self-esteem. Yeah. Uh, I died sometime in the movie, but I'm not sure how. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. I was there, then I was just gone. I didn't give me a hat. <laughs> but my car still lives, so that's... <laughs> even though it was full of blood and candy. <laughs> I will send you pictures of the car. Okay. There's two things. One is one is the blood and the windows and stuff. The other is they had cameras mounted on it, and it basically takes up the entire hood of the car. I don't know how this guy could have possibly seen to drive this car. Yeah. Um... When I saw him, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> this guy's, he's going off a cliff. There's no way you can see driving this thing. Yeah. Because it's just it says, that's my car. I only got 600 bucks for this. That's my car. <laughs> so much. Well, I, I, I will say, when they gave it back, it was in, you know, they, like, detailed it out. and it was, uh, Wow. It was pretty cool. I don't know if use it for free, but for just for the park. But, hey. Well, nowadays, I got the money. They, I got a part in the movie. Nowadays, they probably use, like, what, drones and GoPro cameras, I would imagine. but Right. But uh, back the then, yeah. The, and he got on the hood cranking it, cranking the handle, like, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll send you some pictures of the car and you will be stunned. Yeah, and also, and so give me, the, give me the names of your books. I'll see if I can find them on Amazon, too. I'd like to read them. Okay, Maybe we can have a, a second book signing when uh, things open up here again. I look for the play. That's right. Maybe <laughs> yeah, I look again. for the play. I look for the play. <laughs> I look for the play. We call okay. it Tracy's right. World. All right. The the acting. The, yeah, nobody the, wants it. The acting. Nobody anyway. Wants a part of that. All right. <laughs> you take care of yourself. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Thanks, Oscar. All right. Bye. You too. Bye.